Hi everyone, it's Eliana, and I don't have a card to share with you today. I have a scrapbook page layout. I have not scrapbooked in almost two years, and so I wanted to do a practice run, and so I did this page. And uh, after I did this page, I even made a card, which I show in a different video, but I'll give you a little peek here. Uh, instead of recreating the page exactly as before, uh, which I used on the first page, I used the Strathmore watercolor paper, and this time I'm going to see um, what it would look like if I use the uh, Master's Touch, which is the generic Hobby Lobby brand watercolor paper. And so I'm going to use that first page as a guideline so that I could have a direct side-by-side -side comparison. So the Hobby Lobby brand of Master's Touch watercolor paper came in a pad of 12 pieces of watercolor paper cut down to 12 by 12. And that was $5.99 and the Strathmore watercolor paper, uh, I bought the bigger version and it was the 12 by 18 spiral bound and that is $16.99 at Hobby Lobby. But of course you can always use coupons to purchase either one. And so I just placed my watercolor paper inside the Memory Misty and I'm using the Wild Hibiscus stamp set from Alta New and I've just placed the stamps. Um, the Master's Touch watercolor paper does have a, a little bit of texture. Um, it's kind of like an orange peel um, texture to it. Um, it's not as smooth as the Strathmore watercolor paper, so for some of the stamps that have a little bit more of a solid stamp, like the one in the upper corner there um, that I'm stamping right now, the one at the very top, that one has a solid middle part, and so to get that solid part to stamp on the textured paper was a little difficult. And so what I did was I added another piece of foam, and this is just a regular piece of fun foam. Um, it's the fun foam that I use when I stamp with um, thicker stamps like Mama Elephant. Um, they're a little bit thicker, and so I use a different foam insert for that. And it's just one that I cut down. I am... Um, Proceeding on with stamping, and you'll notice that that bottom flower is totally hanging off the misty. Um, it, I didn't want to have to shift my paper with it being ridged. I wanted to make, I wanted to make sure that I stamped well and that it was in the corner. And so what I did was I moved that extra foam shim over to the edge, and I was able to stamp. Um, it brought the paper up to the level of the um, rail, that's what I call the edge where the ruler is, it brought it up to the level and so it allowed me to stamp and have the stamp totally hang over the edge of the misty. And you'll see it here again. And so I'm adding that little piece of shim right there and then the stamp is going to even stamp on the ruler and you can just wipe that off. Um, just another way that you could use the Misty and it still stamps perfectly well. And once again, it's that solid center of that flower that I'm having trouble with, so I stamped it quite a few times. I did add that little flower over on the right simply because when I was creating the first page, it just seemed off that the left side of the page was so busy. And so I just went ahead and added that one flower on the other end and I created a visual triangle with that same flower and so the picture is in the center of that visual triangle. I'm adding some clear embossing powder and I'm just heat setting it so that I could watercolor inside the raised part. And because there is no place to tape my um, watercolor paper down. I'm using a brand new Cricut mat and um, it the paper warped quite a bit when I heated it and it warped more than um, normal and so I'm using my finger to kind of help guide it flat but the Cricut mat is helping to um, 
to stay a little bit flat so that the water isn't running where I don't want it to be. I'm using my Gonzai Tombi watercolors and this is number 37 and I've just watered it down so that the flowers are a little bit lighter. And as I showed in my card video, I did not um, worry too much about the watercoloring. I was very loose with it, and that helped quite a bit. I zoomed out a little bit so that you could um, see a little bit better. And I added more to those three flowers with the leaves. I added it, uh, added more pigment to the watercolor so that I got a deeper color just to add some variation. I didn't want all the flowers to be exactly the same. And the watercolor paper did okay. Um, coloring the flowers was, was fine. Um, when I go to color the background paper, that's when I notice a big difference on how it takes the watercolor. But in small portions, it did fine. I'm taking the green from the watercolor set and the green is number 58 and I'm just adding it to um, the stems and the leaves and I'm just being very careful. Um, I did speed up the video quite a bit so that it wouldn't be so incredibly long. I'm taking a big flat brush and I've watered down number 47 of the watercolor set and just to create more of a cream background or toned down um, muted look to this um, background and you can see right here where the the pigment is just not absorbing I'm not sure if that's what it is but it's just kind of sitting on top it doesn't um, blend into the paper very well so I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush and I'm going to get in between the flowers and typically I'm a, a two-page layout kind of a person, but I only created this one page. Um, but if you wanted to create a two-page layout, you could very easily um, replicate this page so that you have a mirror image on the other side. So I am just trying to be very careful so that I don't get um, the brown inside the flowers. I did wait until the flowers were completely dry before I um, colored in the background. I really preferred the Strathmore watercolor paper when I uh, look at them side by side. It just um, the colors just are absorbed into the paper and it looks smoother and um, I, I did notice a difference in the paper but this is good paper to practice on if you want to do a dry run um, for stamping um, on your scrapbook pages. Now that the page is completely dry I'm going to add my title and I'm using two stamp sets. One is from Concord and Ninth, and it's the Being Classy stamp set. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe they will do other um, larger stamps so that we can piece together some titles for scrapbooking. So uh, hint, hint to Concord and Ninth for more words to use. Um, so I'm stamping this several times so that I could get the um, solid line but the paper is textured and so I'm adding a little bit of a shim. I'm adding some of the grid paper that's included in the Memory Misty just so that it has uh, it raises the paper up a little bit more so I can get some of that ink into the little crevices. I am adhering my picture to the watercolor paper. I've added some adhesive um, I flipped my ruler around because there is a little piece of cork underneath and I wasn't getting my picture straight. I'm using a little bit of stays on on the bottom portion of the stamp set so that it doesn't stick, so that it sticks to the photo. 
I did get a little bit of stays on on my lid and I didn't wipe it away fast enough so it did stain it and so I'm just using a little bit of the Novus 2 and I just rubbed it in with my fingers and then I was able to wipe it off so no more stays on on my lid. I'm using a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and it is the Striped Greeting stamp set and I only want the UR from here. The Concord and Nine stamp set did have a your um, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, but I didn't want the hyphen in there. I wanted the U-R, and so I did find that stamp set in my stash. Um, I forgot that I wanted to emboss it, so I pulled my picture off. And now I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss it so that the title matches the flowers. And because I used my memory misty, the picture will be straight and the where the stamped image will be perfectly lined up. And so now my um, I'm going to add my liquid pearls and this is the rose gold. And I'm just going to add it to uh, the center of each of the flowers, just a couple of dots. I'm not, and normally when I use liquid pearls, I put little dots and then I flick the back so that it flattens them out, but I didn't want these to flatten out, so I did not um, do that on my layout. I'm trying to be careful that I do them in a certain order so that I don't accidentally uh, smudge it when I add them on. So now my two pages are done and I'm just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so that you could see um, what it looks like and you can tell that the one on the left is a Strathmore uh, the watercolor on the background just sits a little bit better on it so here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the flowers and the flowers look exactly the same but it's the background that I think makes a difference and you can kind of see how it looks on the Strathmore and then here it is on the uh, Master's Touch. I guess it just depends on the texture that you want to use. And the card sample is done on the Arches watercolor paper which turned out so awesome. That paper is just the best but I didn't want to invest in the Arches watercolor paper to use on a scrapbook page. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this scrapbook page. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Have a great day.